I think I've mentioned this before. Um, I have something of a background in the trade union movement, and uh, one of my specialties um, in the trade union movement or in the union that I was uh, affiliated with, or still am, I'm still a member, I'm not an officer anymore, but I'm still active. One of my um, roles, sort of unofficial, when I was in the leadership, was to deal with the denunciatory, extreme left-wing, Marxist-type, froth-at-the-mouth, uh, almost stereotypical, angry, communist type that seems to gravitate towards um, the trade union movement. Um, I'm a, you know, our, I was a social democrat. I am a social democrat. I'm not actually really that strong about politics, but I just don't like fanatics. Um, and I was, uh, I developed quite a skill in dealing with these people. The main thing, what you have to do is you just uh, give them enough rope and they eventually hang themselves. It always seems to work out that way. You can't just shut them up because uh, they, that, the, if you understand the mind of a fanatic, it doesn't work that way. But anyway, um, I'm used to being sort of the, I don't know, the lefty who deals with the extreme left or the lefty who will deal with the angry, destructive left, I guess you'd call them, the communist type, Marxist, you know, just string up the rich type. Um, <clears throat> and with that kind of background or tendency or whatever, um, I can understand the thinking that informed the... Uh, center of the political spectrum and the center left of the political spectrum in the United States in the 1960s when they decided they were perfectly capable of handling communism. They didn't need the right wing to do it. Um, when they went to Vietnam, oh no, 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 never mind you right wingers, you guys are just yahoos, cowboys. Um, we on the center left and the center of the political spectrum, we've got the muscle, we've got the savoir-faire, we've got the uh, determination to stand up to these commies and beat them. So you just stand over there right wing and we'll show you how it's done. We know what happened in Vietnam. And the people who engineered American intervention in Vietnam, i.e. wasn't the right wing, it was the center and center left as I say, they believed that they could get involved in Vietnam and fight an idealistic war. The problem is, though, <laughs> war being war, idealism goes out the window very quickly when it comes to things like, well, just practical issues when you're slogging through a jungle and you don't know if the next village is Viet Cong or friendly. Um, plus, also, when you have a 18-year-old conscript from a you know, slum in Los Angeles, you're not quite sure if he's going to understand the big issues here and how the idealistic left or the idealistic center, I guess you could even say, with kind of echoes to this day with Obama. Um, you don't really know whether or not the, the conscript gets it or he understands what he's fighting for. He's simply some guy that's been plucked off the street, sent off to Vietnam, given a gun and said, shoot all these communists. And I don't know. So he sees a pretty young Vietnamese girl and he... Hey, nobody's looking, and guess what he does? Um, wars can't be fought idealistically, I don't think. Um, I understand that the Second World War, you could say that, yes, that was a idealistic war, but um, idealistic war that was real politic enough to get into bed with somebody who was probably a worse mass murderer than Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin. I told you I didn't like the communists, but anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, I distrust anybody who says that we're going to get into a war for moral reasons. I can see the practical need to deal with ISIS. I understand that. Uh, they're going to mess up the world if we don't do something about them, and I don't want the world to be messed up. But if we're going to do something about it, I think that we'd better have a stronger foundation than some shaky idea of moral superiority. Um, if ISIS is bad, who's good? 